Hello. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amanda and this is Dino. And today we'll be having our CP show with you. So before we before we go into the algorithm in depth, uh, this is actually the fifteen puzzle. So has anyone heard of this before or like played of this before? So this fifteen puzzle is actually like a sliding puzzle that consists of a frame of number tiles in a random order, which which has one tile that is missing. And the objective of this game is to get the numbered tiles back into order. So maybe now can we let's let's try it out and maybe let's get a volunteer down. Clarence. Yeah, I think Clarence looks quite interested. So can we have Clarence <laughs> to come down to try? Before he tries, we'll shuffle this and then we'll see. We just give you some time to play around. Clarence has said that this is not very fun. <laughs> so actually, this, he, behind this 15 puzzle, there's actually an algorithm. So let's see the solver. Okay. This one has actually solved it really quickly as compared to Clarence. He didn't solve it. Okay, but it's fine. It's okay. So the algorithm that is used behind this 15 puzzle is actually called the priority queue algorithm. So what is priority queue? Priority queue is an abstract data type, which is like a regular queue. But in this case, uh, there is like a priority that is associated with each particular element. This priority queue only supports comparable data, so it must be ordered in some way or another so that the relative priority can be assigned. So it is a collection of ordered elements that provides fast access to the highest priority element. And here are some of the key concepts, which are on queue, pick, and dequeue. So this is an overview of how it uh, works, and this was the code that was actually run behind the algorithm of the 15 puzzle game that Clarence was playing. So firstly, on solver state, solver state actually stores the current position of all the numbers in the grid, and it also stores the list of the steps to get there from the starting grid. Another one would be priority queue, which is the one that's responsible for making sure we always explore the lowest cost state first. But what is this lower cost state? It is equal to the number of steps taken from the initial state plus the estimated number of steps remaining to get to that particular solution. And lastly, grid.valid moves. It returns a list of all valid moves to make on the grid. So for example, if the empty square is in the middle of the grid, there are four directions that it can move in. However, if it's in the corner, there are only two valid directions. So in a nutshell, this algorithm describes with you the optimal solution, which is the least amount of moves that is required for any valid 15 puzzle configuration. So some other applications that Priority Queue uses is that, for example, in print jobs, like let's say in school, we always print like many documents, right? Uh, they have to constantly accept all these jobs from all over the building. So one example can be like, uh, the priority is highest for faculty staff, then for graduate students, and then us undergraduate students. Another one would be emergency room scheduling. So for example, there's a car accident patient, then a guy with a flu that came at the same time, but who should be like, attended to first? So in this case, the obvious choice would be the one who met in a car accident. So now Lionel will be talking about the ways to implement this. Okay, uh, <coughs> so, so I'll be talking about two ways that you can use to implement priority queue, which is using arrays which can be ordered or unordered, as well as using heat. So the first way is to use unsorted arrays. So imagine a person who comes into the ER, so he's the last person, number six. So he will be added to the end of the queue. So uh, which is what we call enqueuing. Enqueuing, so the complexity of enqueuing is 0 0.1 because it's added straight to the last. But however, if you want to find the person with the highest priority, which is number one, so he has to compare with each and every uh, element in the array, which uh, will take up to a complexity of O n. 
then in a sorted array, in order to act him into a queue, but to still be sorted, for the array to still be sorted, uh, he has to compare with every single element in the worst case scenario. But however, uh, if it's because it's sorted, in order in order to find the one that we have the highest priority, it's always at the first uh, zero index. Yeah, so the complexity is <coughs> zero one. Okay, next is to uh, use priority queue using heap. So heap is a special arrangement of elements in an array, but however, it always starts as uh, number one. Yeah, as you can see on the picture here. Then uh, number one will be the parent, and number two and three will be the child index, which is uh, number one divided by two. Uh, num number one times two and one times two plus one. Yeah. So for priority queue using kids, uh, okay, in order to get the high, in order to add uh, element to the heat, we just need to add him to the the last column. So when he's added into the last column, the heap itself will arrange in such a way that it will compare number seven to number three, which is the parent of it. And then uh, as long as the priority is higher than the parent, it will swap the place. So after it compares with number three, then it will compare with number one again, which is the parent of three. So if the priority is still higher than the parent, you will swap the place. So uh, the complexity is O log N. Yeah, so this is the illustration of it. Then next is, uh, imagine you want to dequeue it. So which means that you will take the first person, uh, you will take the highest priority person and take him out of the heap and you will process it. So what happened is that uh, once you take him out, you will not shift the array by uh, by one. So instead, you will take the last person and you will place it into the empty place. And then through that, you will reorder the position in the heap itself. So in order to do that, what happens is that the just now I took number one, which is number seven, back to number one. So uh, then you'll compare with its children. And so, so what happens is that the number three, which has priority four, is compared to the uh, number one, which has priority two. So two is higher than four. So it will always be at the top. Then three is compared to six. So uh, it will always be higher than number six. Yeah, so the complexity is O log N. So this is uh, a way that we can use to do priority queues. Yeah.